I am the son of Arlen and Lori Scharfenberg, and uh, I am in fact a Mennonite, so we will go even further. I am the grandson to Tina and Cornelius Lowen, and Minna and Leroy Scharfenberg. Currently, I am studying at Steinbeck Bible College. Um, studying does not mean that I know everything, so uh, we'll see how this goes. I am enjoying it immensely. This is, in fact, the first message I will have ever preached, so I guess I'll, I'll say that I will accept criticism. Um, I'll be back here preaching again next Sunday, so if you enjoy what you hear, um, please come back, and if not, then I will uh, try to redeem myself and you can come back anyway. <laughs> so, if you have your Bibles, it's open to Matthew chapter 5. And um, I'll be, my topic this morning is the Beatitudes, so we'll be reading verses 1 to 12 just to start off. Starting at verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the poor, pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. When I was preparing for this message, I um, began to have doubts as to whether I was actually intelligent enough to give this message. Um, and I realized that probably amongst this group there are quite a few people who are much more qualified than me to be standing up here. Um, so I will just start off by saying I do not have more answers to questions on this topic than others might. Um, but I want to present this passage um, as a challenge to all of us to continue to grow in faith. So an interesting fact about me is I've always enjoyed telling stories and hearing stories. So I decided that I would share one um, in I decided I would share this one in which I felt the words of the Beatitudes, um, they stuck out to me. So each Beatitude begins with the words, blessed are. Often, at least for me, um, we try to come up with different words for blessed in our minds since we can't quite grasp what that means. Um, but blessed is the exact word we need. To be blessed is to be happy. It is not a temporary or outward feeling of happiness, but it's more of a state of well-being. Recently, I had appendicitis, and the pain I was experiencing was unlike anything I have ever felt before. There was so much pain that I would actually pass out from it, and later be jolted awake from another wave of the pain. We went to the hospital and when the doctor came in to tell me that I was likely going to have surgery, everything was calm. Looking back, I realized that it was a blessed moment. I was not happy, but I knew that I was in a state of well-being. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Do we recognize that we need, God, that we need God's help? Have we been so spiritually empty that we need to plead with God for faith, because if so, we will receive heaven. It's those moments where everything seems to be going against us, and the only thing left for us is the only thing we ever really needed. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
I was in the room when my grandpa Scharfenberg passed away, and my morning took place in worship as we sang my grandpa as he passed away into heaven. In the moment, there was peace in the hardship. The peace I personally experienced could only have come from God, who is, in his very nature, peace. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Our values as Christians are not often valued by others. We have to be gentle when dealing with other people in our own community. God is supreme, and we have to trust in God that he will be in control in any dispute or area where we feel like it would be easier for us to just take control. God works in all situations, and he blesses us in our gentleness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. To be righteous is to act in an upright, moral, and virtuous way. I think that this is an area where we can all improve. The most obvious thing we hunger and thirst for is food and water. But when we're thirsty, we just go to the fridge or the tap and grab some water. And when we're hungry, we have shells of food waiting for us. The hunger and thirst that Jesus is talking about is the hunger and thirst that comes when we need food, not just want it. We need righteousness in our walks with Christ, as that is the only way that we can be filled and feel truly satisfied. A comparative story would be the woman at the well um, in the springs of living water. Blessed are those who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. This beatitude needs little explaining as it explains itself. This beatitude, however, is one that should convict us all, as quite often there are people in our lives who we just don't get along with very well. We begin to gossip, and it's hurtful to everyone. This is something that we have to stop. We as Christians should not put up barriers of gossip around certain people just because they made a mistake or hurt us. Christ showed mercy by dying for our sins. He did not talk about them to other people. He took them and forgave us. The pure in heart and the peacemakers are blessed. When in your lives have you been pure in heart or pursued peace in a situation? These are times when God blesses and works through us. Our rewards for having these attributes are seeing God and being called His sons. When we look into the Greek text, we realize that when the scripture says the pure in heart will see God, it means that they will realize God, day by day, and one day see Him in heaven. Our day-to-day -day living in peace and purity leads us to see God in our everyday life. Where do you see God in day-to-day -day life? In your families? In your own life? In creation? In the Bible? We see God often, but it is the lifestyle of living out the Beatitudes that lets us actually recognize Him. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It is often said that we do not face very much persecution here in the Western world, and that persecution is only something Christians in faraway countries really face. Recently, a professor of mine spoke about this topic and uh, something he said resonated with me. He asked the question, could we be persecuted? Are we hiding behind the excuse that persecution does not happen so that we do not have to outwardly share our faith? If we would preach to the crowds, just as Jesus, Paul, Peter did in this society, would we not be faced with persecution? Now it could be asked, what does this have to do with us here in Rosenar? But think for just a second. Is there even just one person in your life who could use a little bit of Christianly rebuking? A little reminder on how we're supposed to be living? I'm sure there's at least one. And what is it that stops us from talking about it? The fear that we will be persecuted? Then persecution must really happen here since we're just persecuting ourselves. But if we are persecuted because we are seeking righteousness, then Jesus' promise will hold strong, 
and we will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus puts it best, rejoice and be glad. The Greek word for rejoice is chero. The word means to be cheerful or calmly happy. We are to be calmly happy when we are put down by people who view us as lesser because of the faith that we have. Christians thinking we are too holy or non-believers thinking that we are fools, these are usually the people who put us down. But we need to be calmly happy because our rewards in heaven are great. So, what does this mean for us? Ultimately, that's up to you. Um, for me, it's easy to read this passage and think that these are great ideas and agree that we should follow them. But each one of us is called to be more than that. We need to actually inherit these blessings into our lives and nurture them so that we can become blessed. As images of God, we all have aspects of these blessings in our lives. But it's when we practice them and grow them in ourselves that we inherit the benefits, maybe not in this life, but definitely in the next. Thank you very much for listening.